Hi, I'm Elite Series Pro Greg Hackney, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about fishing grass. Uh, about, you know, probably the, more so the seasonal types of, uh, you know, fishing grass. You know, on a, I find it more times than not, regardless of, uh, of, let's say, the type of grass, it has more to do with the bottom, the way the fish are attracted to it. Uh, you know, at certain times of the year, you know, it's sand. At certain times of the year, it's rock. It's, it's more what, like you look down through here, there's grass everywhere, but it's more about what's going on on the bottom. You know, here we're on the Tennessee River, and really it'll be where, for me here, it's where shale or rock are in the bottom. You know, you know depending on the time of the year, here it is fall of the year, these fish are feeding on shad, you know, and so they'll have a tendency to set up on the bottom, you know, around that shale around the grass. Um, come springtime, this particular lake, you know, they have a uh, winter drawdown. So what that does is make an inside grass line. And you know, come February and March, when those fish are starting to move up, you know, to spawn, it's all gonna be about the inside line. We're now in the fall, of course, you know, we're keying on the outside edge of the grass. Um, but in the spring, it's all about the inside edge. And depending, you know, on the, how cold it is, I mean, you know, I find them on the inside edge of the grass when the water's in the low 40s. You know, it seems like the first time the water gets up, depending on where you are in the country, like this particular lake, you know, has a winter drawdown. And this happens a lot all over the country, you know, they draw the lakes down. So what that does is create a real defined inside grass line. Because now they've exposed that ground during the winter while the water's down. So next spring, when the water comes up, you'll have that clean, hard bottom on the inside edge of that grass. Here it is now fall. And of course, we're keying on the outside edge of the grass, but once the water comes back up in the spring, those fish will move there. And I find what happens a lot of times on a grass lake, when you have an inside edge, that fish never leaves it. Once they move to that inside edge before the spawn, they'll normally move there during the pre-spawn, and, and it'll be some shell or some hard rock or something on that inside edge that, you know, really congregates the fish. That's where they'll spawn at. And then the water will come on up, and, you, and, and even that inside edge may be five, six feet. And that's where the majority of the fish on the lake, the better fish, will sp stay on that inside grass line. They never make that move to the bank. I find they don't go as much to, say, the bushes. Now, some fish always move up into bushes, but on a, on a really good grass lake, it has grass every year. They'll have a tendency, the better ones, to spawn on that inside grass line. Uh, and you won't ever see it going on. It'll be a deal where, you know, you're dragging a Carolina rig, uh, dead stick in a caffeine shad, a uh, chimney stick, something like that, on that inside line to catch them. Now, once those fish get through spawning, you know, they'll have a tendency then just to hang around the grass. You know, you'll start catching them on a, uh, a topwater bait, either a sexy dog or, uh, um, you know, I'll catch them on a frog that time of the year. And they seem to linger in that mid-depth range longer on a grass lake than they do, say, a lake that doesn't have any grass. On a lake that doesn't have any grass, they have a tendency, if they live offshore, it's the instant they get through spawning, whew, they book back off out there and get on their summertime deals a lot quicker. But on a grass lake, because you have such good cover shallow, there'll be a lot of feed about the time the bass get through spawning, you know, then all of a sudden the bluegill has started spawning. So a lot of those big females will hang around and feed on those bluegill because they're easy to catch, you know, after they get through spawning. You know, and then as the year goes, then again, they have a tendency to come back out on that outside edge and then they'll be there till the following spring. Um, you know, I like to key on, you know, of course, real textbook places. If you look up a straight grass line and find a point coming out of grass or a ditch mouth on a creek, uh, some type of turn, you know, something to isolate those fish. And then there'll be on highly pressured lakes that have grass like this. A lot of times the deal is it's just to get out there on, a, on the river on that good side of the grass line and go to you find a school because pressure will have a tendency to move those fish off of, uh, you know, that real key textbook stuff. You know, now the day of the Navionics chips and all of that, every weekend angler out there has, you know, has that good map and knows. So now it starts to be the more subtle spots. You know, now it really comes down to finding a little bit of shale or rock in the grass or one big stump. Something that draws those fish off those real textbook places and you have to find them fishing. You know, you can't find it with your electronics. Well, I guess in a way you do, you're following the grass line with the electronics, but you know, is finding that little subtle place out there on the outside edge of the grass. <laughs> it ain't no fun. <laughs> it don't feel good, don't worry about it. <laughs>
I don't know why I like it when that line goes. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, messed up my trailer. Introducing the Trocar Hook, the first surgically sharpened fish hook. A weapon for fishermen who aren't just out to catch fish, but are out to win.